I was thinking today about whether or not it would be useful to describe texts as sexy. Not only texts, but writers. Writer, a writing style, and a particular piece of writing. Would it be useful? Would it lead to any other interesting revelation, any other interesting insight, any interesting line of thought to start by thinking about a text as sexy or not? Or should we just say good or bad, pleasant or unpleasant? And I think there is some unique utility in that judgment. There, it's an interesting thing to say, and why not explore it? So we can start by recognizing that we have emotions in response to a text. We can have positive emotions, positive feelings, or negative feelings. And in fact, our decision to engage with a text, our decision to go to a book and read it, or continue to read, read a book, or to stop reading a book, is a consequence of that many times, unless you're professionally required to read a text, the emotion has a, a central role to play in whether or not you continue and the level of engagement, the intensity of engagement with the text. So we can be bored in the middle of a text. And boredom essentially means to me when I, I'm in the middle of a book and I have read, let's say I've read half of a book and there's uh, another half to go. Boredom means I essentially don't care about the rest. The remainder the remainder of the book, I'm, I'm indifferent to the rest of the book. And the author or I together, I as a reader and the author together, we failed to form this bond such that I am interested in continuing this relationship until the end of the book. So boredom is one negative response. Another negative response would be irritation or annoyance for varying reasons. You can be irritated by an author who uses language in a way that you don't like, maybe you might think that the author is not using language intentionally enough or creatively enough or um, uniquely enough. So on the other hand, we have positive emotions. And positive emotion doesn't necessarily mean that we say the, the writer or the style of writing or a piece of writing is sexy. You can be at awe with a piece of writing and say, wow, I never thought somebody would have this kind of insight. Or you can really respect how much research has, uh, has gone has gone into writing the book, how much, how, much, how, how diligently, uh, how hardworking the person, the writer, was in doing the research. Um, my cat. And you can admire the, the work. The response of, quiet please, the, Bambi, come here. The response of, this is a sexy writer, is, um, is unique because for me, it involves a curiosity an engagement, not just about the ideas, the style of writing, but also a curiosity about the author. I want to know about the author. I want to, it's like, where is it coming from? This style of thinking, this style of writing, this way of, for example, Suzanne Sontag was a person that I had that reaction to. It's like, without a doubt, this is in the category of sexy for me. I read this book about photography and I'm like, my response is, how could anyone write this way about a seemingly mundane activity of taking photographs? What kind of person, what kind of mind, what kind of educational background? What else is she interested in? Where does this interest come, is coming from? Other examples that I, maybe I can show you. Alain Badu is somebody that I would describe as sexy. The True Life is a good recommendation, especially for young people. Joan Didion, this collection of essays. The way she uses language is sexy. Another example is Gilles Deleuze, a more recent reading experience for me. This is a book introducing, representing, overview of André Bergson's philosophy. André Bergson, the book is called Bergsonism by Gilles Deleuze. So I would describe these authors as, as sexy. It's because they, they open up a horizon of further exploration, a horizon of curiosity, a response towards themselves, their style, their own interest, their own attitude, their own point of view that invites the reader in. I made a list here about attributes in writing that generate a, a sexy style and an unsexy style. And I, I found it easier in general to, to say what it is that makes a style unsexy. That is easier to discuss. And I think that itself is a telling fact. It's telling that it is easier to, to fail at being sexy, to fail. The criteria for a failure is easier to define because every person 
is sexy in their creative endeavor in their own unique way. So you cannot predetermine how good they are, how sexy a person will be in the creative, artistically, in their creative uh, project in advance. So I wrote here that for me, a characteristic of unsexy writing is rigidity. When somebody is imposing unnecessary rigidity, unnecessary guidelines, and they, they're following the guidelines in a, in a way that stifles their movements. Insecurity is also unsexy. And insecurity might cover itself up with overconfidence. Self-preoccupation is unsexy. Trying too hard is unsexy. When a writer gives the impression that they're trying too hard to create a positive image of themselves or trying, trying too hard to be creative with the language, trying too hard to be clever, trying too hard to be witty, we notice why. Because these have effect, even if we don't have a list like this, we implicitly, without knowing why at first, I just lose interest. And then I, that trying too hard, condescend, being condescending, preaching, self, pre, uh, over preoccupation with self, those things act on us and they kill our interest even before we know why we have lost interest in the book. By contrast, being sexy probably has, this is my, just my speculation, has probably something to do with oneself. The author is okay with being vulnerable, showing some truth about who they are. And in that process, they are forgetting their self-image. They are being themselves. So being yourself funny enough has a lot to do with forgetting your image in the mirror or your image in the, on the text. You show yourself unknowingly. They're usually more beautiful. They're more beautiful when they are not thinking actively that I am beautiful, like posing to, in front of a camera. When they are not posing, there's, a, there's an additional beauty. There's a different kind of beauty that is more impressive, that is more charming, that is more, more engaging. Self-forgetfulness, forgetting of self-image in general, I think is sexy in art and in, in everyday life too. Patience is sexy when you realize, when you, when you feel it that a writer has spent a lot of time editing, revising a piece of work. And you see layers and layers of thought in one passage. That this passage has been revised many times and you can feel the layers that have been added on top of one another. And last not trying, which is a complementary point to trying too hard. I'm wondering now, and this is something I'm, something that you can, you can answer for me. Let me know what you think. I wonder to what degree all this sexy, unsexy judgment is subjective. To what degree it depends on the particular history of the particular reader. The, the fact that I have specific sets of experiences, education, attitudes, experiences in my, in my own life. And something that I find sexy now, I will not find sexy 10 years from now. I have a, a good friend who has a kind of a blog. He has um, that one of some of the attributes in the unsexy list that I just mentioned. He's intensely preoccupied with his self-image. He has insecurity. Uh, he preaches and he's try he tries too hard to be sexy. <laughs> But he has lots of fans. And that's an indication that there is a subjective element. Maybe it is purely subjective whether or not we categorize somebody's writing, somebody's work, somebody's artistic creation as sexy or unsexy. So if you are interested in participating in this, in this line of thinking, uh, I'm interested to know, first, do you think this judgment of sexy, unsexy is useful at all in evaluating works of art? Do you have that response? Do you... Think in, that, in those terms too. Uh, do you think it's useful? And do you think it is purely subjective or there's something, there's some objective basis to, to the judgment? Um, all right, that's it. All for now. And I will speak with you in the next video.